And Madeline Wilson is uh, going to be our last presenter today. Um, she's 67 years old. She was diagnosed early in the 90s with antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. She's married. She has two children. And she's a developmental officer. And I'll let her tell you what that is. <laughs> it sounds like I'm still developing. Um, <laughs> An offer, a fundraiser. I was a development officer, a fundraiser. Um, I had my diagnosis, as was said, in uh, the early 90s, 1991, um, of, of antiphospholipid syndrome, and it was secondary, as it turned out. Um, I'm monitored now by my wonderful Irina, who is at the phone if I need her with any crazy question or, and it's so nice to be able to get a person when you call MGH, it's really nice. Um, and she's wonderful. Um, my history before I was diagnosed, um, and of course we're starting in the late 70s through to 1991 when there was still a lot of research going on. I had um, temporary loss of vision off and on, um, and I had dizziness, migraines quite frequently. Um, I had periodic numbing of my one side or the other, um, hands and tingling in the, f in the side of my face. Um, these all, I didn't stay at home for these. I mean, a, a lot of these went to the doctor, and, and, and I was in New York at the time. And it, remember, it was the 60s, and the New York doctor said, oh, you're just on the fast track. <laughs> and I thought, no, no, this is something different. They, so it just went uncared for in many ways. I had lacy rashes on my knees and my elbows, which, kind of intrigued doctors, but they didn't know what to do. I had three miscarriages. I had one premature son um, who is still with us today, and I had a stillborn um, birth. Um, and that was before being diagnosed. <laughs> I never talk about this, so this is really hard for me. Um, during the beginning, trying to sort it all out was horrific. Um, we, would, we were in New York, and then we moved to London. So we sort of started from stage one in London, not knowing anything was wrong other than I could not get pregnant again. That was what was told me. Um, and so we went, and I was lucky, the doctor that I got to see was Graham Hughes, who is very responsible for the creation of the um, of research, I should say, of the antiphospholipid syndrome. And um, he, when I was um, under his care, the vision, my vision kept going. I kept getting these periods of losing consciousness and slightly, um, dis disorientation, and I finally had a grand mal seizure, and the first diagnosis was a seizure. Um, um, uh, uh, they called it epilepsy at that time, and um, I took anticonvulsants for it, and I could take, I had to be desensitized to the anticonvulsants. Um, because I had reactions and rashes or breathing with a lot of them. So um, I started taking that. That stopped the grand mal seizure, but I still had partial seizures. And um, so therefore, I wasn't driving or anything. And then from there, we went to um, uh, one day my face swelled for no reason. And my doctor said, I think we better check. Um, do some lupus tests on you. So I was diagnosed with systemic lupus at that point. Um, my vision kept on going in and out, in and out, and then one day it went completely in my left eye, and that was a blood clot. And I, from then on, they put me on um, warfarin, and I um, was on warfarin for, oh, two years when I had a stroke, and so I was then bumped up to taking, getting my INR at a higher level than that, and then um, 
I moved back here and I had another stroke. It had nothing to do with Boston, although I wanted to stay in London. Um, and I, um, I um, went to, um, started with Mass General, and now my blood is kept at a very thin level. I have to have it done um, twice, once or twice a week, because it, it does exactly what the doctor was saying. It peaks and falls, I'm on, and, and for no particular reason. And, um, and so I'm here a lot. I prefer that, actually, because I get to, again, talk over how I feel with Irina, and that means a lot to me. Um, the things you said about when to call the doctor, um, that's always really hard. But I think as the time has gone on, I have begun to know my body and a red flag goes up for you. There's no question. All of a sudden you say, wait, that's not kidney. <laughs> you know, it just goes up for you, but it takes time to get to know your body. In getting to that point, you need to do just what Rebecca said. Badger your doctor as much as you feel you want. Get the answers you want. Bring an advocate with you if you're if you do not yourself want to be in the position of badgering the doctor, bring someone with you. Um, and, and always, always try to separate, and this is the hardest part, separate yourself from your illness. Don't be Madeline Wilson, that ill girl. I try to put Madeline Wilson here and my illness here. And when I can do something about my illness, I bring them together. Um, most people don't want to hear about it after the first, oh my God, uh, then they don't want to hear anymore. And you can see it in their eyes, they're drifting or they're looking for the person behind you. You have to make sure you have one person that you can cry on their shoulder, that's important. But, um, and it may even be your doctor, um, but, it, but you have to make sure you have one person, but don't, um, don't let it, for any reason, um, stop you from doing everything you want to do. The eman feeling emancipated to bring a letter on an airplane, which is what I have done. Traveling to a foreign country and finding out in Il Italy where I can get my blood done and having the test results come back here. I mean, you, all of these things are possible. You don't have to stay married to your doctor or to your lab or to your blood tests. Um, we have, you know, all of us have something that is wrong with us, um, but we're all here today and um, will more than likely be here tomorrow. And, and we should all try to do the best that we can in between those times. That's the only way I can make it work for me. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a few minutes left. Um, if anyone in the audience has a question for any of our panel participants. Thank you for your presentations. What I uh, I draw from uh, your uh, your presentations is that is your desire your vow to fight it off. And that's, I, I believe it, it is the most positive to say, I fight it off, I'm going, to, I'm going to win. Thank you. My question is for Rachel, was it? Um, I have a similar situation where they said, we don't really know, but we're gonna go ahead and blame the birth control pill. How long are you going to accept that? Or are you going to go after more answers? Or I, I am. Um, and I, I have a great hematologist um, here that I'm working with. And the plan right now um, for me um, is to stay on Coumadin for six months 
at the end of six months, I am going to come off for two weeks and do another panel of tests. It's, it's hard to get a lot of, to the underlying clauses, of course, when you're on Coumadin, because it can alter uh, test results, is my understanding. Um, so at that point, um, and, and I'm thinking about it now, but that's sort of where I'm going to concentrate. I'm trying not to obsess over it at the moment, because I know we're obsessing a lot <laughs> about what happened, and it's stressful that way. So. Um, I'll make my decision at that point, um, make sure I'm, I'm surrounded by physicians um, that I'm very comfortable with and trust them. Um, so that's, that's where I'm at now and that's what I think works for me, you know, and when we come to that point. Good luck. My question is for any of the women on the panel and it's probably a really ridiculous question, but how do you shave your legs with what? <laughs> It's shaving. Wax. You use wax? Get them waxed. Okay. Does, does everybody agree with waxing? I would add electric razors are fine, but I also would say safety razors are fine. Don't be in a hurry. Use some shaving cream to make it nice and smooth. And if you're a little unsteady on your feet, sit down in your shower or make a nice luxurious bath for yourself. But you don't have to shy away unless you're really nicking your legs all up. But a safety razor would be okay. Take your time. It doesn't work. Well, just gonna... Oh, treat yourself to Bel Santo. You'll love it. <laughs> My question or comment, I guess, is to the last speaker, and I apologize for not remembering your name. Madeline. Um, Madeline, I was uh, diagnosed four years ago with antiphospholipid syndrome after um, suffering from bilateral pulmonary embolisms at the age of 40. Um, and I have just recently been taken off of warfarin because my INRs were swinging from in anywhere from 0.9 to 8.1. So my, the hematologist has taken me off of everything right now, which is temporarily, I've been off it now for two months, but it's extremely unsettling to me to not be on anything and to still have antiphospholipid syndrome. So I feel like I'm sort of stuck. I was in an anticoagulation clinic and was taken out because my levels were just, you, you know. Do you blood tests weekly, bi-weekly? I'm not having anything done right no, now. when you were. I, I was having it done weekly. I was testing at home. They, they, uh, I'm sorry, I was having it done weekly. Um, twice weekly, I was testing at home. Um, they tried me on Xarelto and then took me off of that, put me back on warfarin. So I sort of feel like I'm drifting right now, and I guess I'm just wondering. I mean, I'm not a professional, but right. when mine has swung like that, and I've gone to eight, and then you go, you know, when you're at eight and you rub your eyes and you're, you start getting two black eyes, um, it is, I've always felt that it could be, and it was like this in England, but now with the, anti, uh, with the anticoagulation management clinic, um, I sometimes have it done twice a week, and it's done from my arm. They say that that's the most accurate reading for that. It's not the finger. And so I come in. I'm, I'm lucky enough, although I've gone to clinics when I've been out of town. I mean, but I, I'm lucky enough to live nearby so I can come in. But um, it's an immediate reformulation. I mean, it just is. And, and for me, I was a little unclear about what was said this morning about it taking so long for warfarin to work. I'm not really, I, I don't think it takes so long for it to work. And if you're at one point something and you're in here and they give you the results, I mean, maybe it is a, a, a matter of you going in and getting the heparin injection and then starting the warfarin again. I don't know, but it doesn't seem, I'm not a doctor, but mine does the exact same thing and really for no reason. I mean, vitamin K, yes, when all the fresh vegetables are in in the summer. But Irina and I just say, okay, well, then do this. Let's do this, and let's try that. And it seems to get me down at least. I don't, haven't hit numbers like eight point something. 
um, in a long time. I think the concern was that it was the antiphospholipid syndrome that was making things difficult, and they're not sure what to do with it, so they're, we're not doing anything right Who's now. I think if um, perhaps that question might be addressed a little bit by our next speaker, who uh, deals a lot with women um, who have clotting disorders. So we might just park that until we hear what she has to say. Any other questions? Well, I thank you all very much for participating today. You did a wonderful job.